Thank you everyone today for joining in our today's session. It's regarding Microsoft Sentinel integration with Chat GPT and Microsoft Team. So let me uh, give you a brief introduction about myself. So my name is Mohammad Ahmed and I'm an Azure Solutions architect working in TechBix for over four years now. So yeah, today we are here to represent the demo about Microsoft Sentinel integration with Chat GPT and Microsoft Teams. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So Guys, today's agenda is we will telling we will be telling you about what TechBris is, what is Microsoft Sentinel. We will discuss in brief that what is the Microsoft Sentinel workflow, and then we will have a interactive session about the demo of Microsoft Sentinel integration with Chat GPT and Microsoft Teams. And then we will be discussing about the TechBix Sentinel expertise and uh, TechBix special off offerings. In the end, there is a QA session as well. So if you guys have any question, we will spare some time for your questions to attend. OK, so let me tell you about the brief introduction about TechBricks. So I will just spare the details over here. I will tell you what gen generally what TechBricks is. So we are a cloud consultancy uh, partners for uh, we have headquarters in Dubai for now over a decade. Previously known as KeplerWorks, we were AWS uh, partners and now we are also Microsoft Gold uh, partners as well. So these are a bunch of our few services that uh, we offer. So we offer cloud services, DevOps services, migration services, and then OpenShift services and much more. So let's start about, so I wanted to start with a little bit of introduction about what Microsoft Sentinel is before diving deep into the actual presentation and actual representation of uh, how Microsoft Sentinel works and how we have integrated our use case. So basically Microsoft Sentinel is a SIEM and a SO solution. So it's a combination of both. So what is a SIEM solution? SIEM solution is a security incident and event management tool. And the SO solution is just the automated response. So Microsoft Sentinel is a bundle of two things packaged together in Microsoft Azure. So it's just a simple one click deployment. It's just, uh, it's uh, serverless. I mean, I will not talk about the infrastructure side of Microsoft Sentinel. I mean, it's serverless, you just have to ingest your data, just simple one click deployment and uh, just do the data sources, connect the data connectors and that's it that we will be also uh, go through in a moment. So this is a typical workflow of Microsoft Sentinel. So in cybersecurity, there is a term called CDIR. So what is CDIR basically is to collect the data, detect it, and after investigating it, respond to it via manually, either manually or uh, automatically. You can do the auto uh, automated response or you can do the manual response. So this is a whole, uh, in a nutshell, what Microsoft Sentinel is. So let's get straight to our demo. We will be discussing that how you can optimize your security, how you can go one step ahead with uh, integration of chat GPT and Microsoft Teams to your same solution. Okay, so here, so I will go to the Microsoft Sentinel here. So here right now, I'm into my Azure account. These are our Azure environment. So if I click on, yes, so here you can see that we have deployed Microsoft Sentinel. So for the data sources, I would like to show you that what data sources are that I have connected that are sending the data logs to our Microsoft Sentinel. So basically, there are a bunch of virtual machines. So it's just a simple use case where we wanted to simulate an average uh, environment of any infrastructure ranging from SMBs to enterprises. So they typically have Windows workloads and Ubuntu workloads. So, so just like that, we have our bunch of virtual machines uh, that are uh, running on Windows operating system and Ubuntu operating system. So then I will just click quickly go to the logic apps. So basically what logic app is, we can we will discuss that in a moment. So logic apps is integrated with Microsoft Sentinel to complete the automation part. So logic, logic apps are basically the serverless automated workflow solution that Microsoft Azure offers, where you can just simply uh, do some bunch of configurations and all of your functions, all of your tasks are just done automatically. So here are a bunch of uh, logic apps that I have in place, but for this specific uh, demo, we have this shared GPT demo, uh, one logic app. Here I will just quickly go to the logic app designer so that you can have a whole understanding of what is actually happening. 
So let's go to the Microsoft Sentinel first. I will click on it. So you will see a general overview of Microsoft Sentinel. When you open it, you get a bunch of, you know, a bunch of dashboards and some incidents. So all of the Microsoft Sentinel capabilities in the overview section where you can see uh, you have the uh, logs and you have the uh, dashboards in the form of graphs and then there are in the form of maps as well. Okay, so let I so I will start it step by step so that you have a comprehensive understanding of what is actually hap happening and what is Microsoft Sentinel. So in Microsoft Sentinel, Microsoft Azure offer, offers a bunch of pre-built solutions that are in place. So everything is packaged as a solution, right? So if I could quickly click on Content Hub, so Content Hub is basically nothing just like your AWS or Azure Marketplace where you go and deploy a bunch of different resources. Same like that, Microsoft Sentinel offers, let's you can say it's its own marketplace where you have a different kind of packages bundled together, right? So you have different uh, packages, let's say Amazon Web Services there, Azure Active Directory there, Cisco is there, DNS and Google Cloud Friend, a bunch of uh, cloud solutions are there. So you just simply install those solutions and with those solutions come dashboards, data connectors, and a lot of uh, other things such as analytical rules as well. We will uh, go, to, go uh, to that in a moment. So let's say these are the contents. These are the uh, solutions that I have installed. These are the pre-built solution mics by Microsoft Azure, right? So I have installed these bunch of solutions. So in uh, in the uh, in these Microsoft solutions, you get a bunch of data connectors, right? So what are data connectors? So I, I'm just you know trying to explain you the flow how it, how the things are actually working. So data connectors are the name. So just just the connectors that where you want to gather your data from, right? Whether you want to uh, gather your data from virtual machines, you want to gather the data from on premises, from other hyperscalers like AWS or GCP, or you want to uh, collect your data within the virtual environment, such as uh, Azure Active Directory and uh, Microsoft Azure account itself. So these are the connectors that came into place after I downloaded the content from Content Hub, right? So these were the data connectors that were given to me. So out of these 27 data connectors, for this demonstration purposes, I have connected 12 of them. Here you can see these green ones are the ones that are connected. So these are basically Azure Activity. I'm connecting the uh, CEF logs and uh, via the AMA. This is Azure Migration migration agent connector and the legacy agent connector as well. I'm collecting the data from the Microsoft 365, collecting the data from XDR and you know a bunch of other services. So after that, so now that we have co uh, connected the data sources, so we have collected the logs, right? So now I want to see those logs in a more interactive form, right? So these are the workbooks. Workbooks are basically dashboard that uh, Microsoft Azure uh, offers so you you will just have to you know go and create so when you download the solutions from content hub you get a bunch of pre-built dashboards as well definitely you can create your own custom dashboards first but you can also have the pre-built dashboards as well so let's say uh, so as i told in the start that i've been, I've been collecting the data from let's say linux machines a typical uh, infrastructure of any enterprise let's say so if i click on view save workbooks so it will take me to the interactive dashboard of where I'm collecting the data for all the Linux machines. So if I change the, let's say last 60 days. So here you can see all of the logs that I've connected using the data, Microsoft Sentinel data connectors. Those logs are coming into an interactive form over here, over in these dashboards. Here you can see that 31,000 uh, different type of events are there, right? These are my uh, basically, uh, Ubuntu virtual machines, okay, and these are the time generated events. These are there are also live events also. You can see in the form of charts also that what is going on, okay. So let's say if, uh, if I go back and go to the Windows one as well. So if I click on the Windows security events here, if I click on View Saved Workbooks, it will give me the logs of all the Windows machines that I have deployed into my uh, Microsoft uh, Azure account, or if those Windows virtual machines are on rather on-premises or, or AWS, all of those virtual machines you can see in one dashboard, in one single dashboard here, right? So if I click on last 60 days, so it, it will give me the 
logs for all the you know uh, event logs because uh, windows generates the event logs so you can see the windows events logs here so these so currently i'm using i've deployed the uh, connector and agent for only one virtual machine that is windows one just for to simulate the uh, typical enterprise infrastructure so if you can you can, I, you can see the event ids you can see the uh, event description as well so if i scroll down so these are the bunch of failed log on attempts that have been, you know, they're, they're might be sitting some boards, they're trying to do some uh, brute force attack or trying to get the access of the username and password. So if, here it says the status is failed, right? So if I scroll down, you can see the log on types, the log on uh, different uh, dashboards as well. Okay. So as you know, Office 365 and 365 is a very popular tool. So they're so as and Microsoft Sentinel is a Microsoft product. So both of these things integrate seamlessly, right? So if I click on SharePoint and OneDrive logs as well, so you can here you can also have a view that what is happening to your SharePoint also, because it is a very important aspect in any organization. Your emails, your uh, files, those are super, super urgent to you. Yeah, they, they are super protective. You have to be very concerned about them. So if I click on uh, operations, let's say, so you can filter those logs, filter those dashboards according to the files. Let's say who created what files, who accessed those files and who changed those files as well. But for the demonstration, I will just quickly click on, let's say all operations. And in your organization, you have a bunch of users, right? There, uh, uh, those users are getting authenticated from Active Directory. So if I click on the dropdown of these, I can uh, manually select either of the uh, user and I get the logs for them as well. But for now, I will just uh, let leave it on add all. And now if you see the operation summary, uh, summary. so if you see that OneDrive logs are 108K, SharePoint and 11.6K, if you can see, so these are the generic logs that are coming from Office 365 and SharePoint, right? So it says that file has been modified for over 25,049, and these are the uh, user counts that what users have been, uh, what operation, how many operation counts they have done on different files, right? So if you see that, you can see a lot of users that have been interacting with our SharePoint lately. So here in the form of graphs, you can see also, you can see even the client IP address, that which IP address they, they were trying to access uh, the our files and all, okay? so. Two things we have discussed so far, how we collect the data, right? And how we uh, look that data, analyze that data in form of interactive dashboards, right? And after that, I want to take your uh, attention to the analytics rules in place. So now let's say we have, we are collecting the data, we are analyzing the data. So what if there are some anomalies, right? I want to see those anomalies as well. So when we download in the solutions from the Counted Hub or we, actually implemented our own solutions, you get a bunch of analytical rules in place as well. So you can uh, go on and create your own analytical rules or just use the pre-existing rules by Microsoft itself. So here after downloading the uh, solutions from Content Hub, these are a bunch of uh, uh, analytical rules uh, that were in place that I got, okay? And those who, we, who shows that are in use are are actually I am using those uh, rules into my Azure infrastructure. So if I click on active rules, so these are the basically rules that I have implemented to our solution. So let's say there are a bunch of, uh, if I, uh, okay, so yes, you can see now these are the names of those rules. So say if there is a brute force on Windows machine, just, uh, create an incident for that. If, this, if there is a you know distributed password cracking attempts, just create the anomaly for that. If there are anonymous sign-in events from an IP, just create the dashboard and incident for that as well. So now these rules are in place. So let's say if a rule, this one is triggered. So someone is trying to do brute force attack. So those details will be get logged into the incidents there, right? So these are the basically incidents. So we're uh, based on your analytical rules. Okay, so those rules were triggered. So if you can see, these are the rules that were triggered and are currently happening to my infrastructure. So if I see, so someone have, has been trying to do some brute force attack, 
on the Linux machines or maybe the virtual machines, or there are some paid logon attempts into our uh, account as well. So before going to the actual uh, chat GPT and open AI integration, I just want to uh, take your uh, attention to this user analytics uh, behavior of Microsoft Sentinel. So what UEBA is basically user entity behavior analytics is so let's say all of those logs, all of those things that are coming from the outside of the organization, right? We are collecting the data from the internet. So let's say what happens that if someone within your organization, his password or username got compromised, right? So you cannot detect those things with the traditional same solutions in the market. You cannot detect, okay, someone, someone has got my password or username and now he's trying to access the different files. So how we can detect that in Microsoft Sentinel? So Microsoft Sentinel keeps the activity track that how the things are actually happening. So let's say someone from marketing guy or someone from sales guy is trying to access my, let's say Terraform files or trying to access my, you know, ARM templates. So how you can see that? So let's say if I quickly go and type in my email address. So using the analytics behavior, so it is keeping the track of my activities that what I have been doing lately are there any anomalous things in my behavior? Has my behavior over the past few days or past uh, few weeks have changed? Am I trying to access those files? That, let's say the files that, that are business important files or something. So if I click the timestamp of logs 30 days, so these user analytics behaviors are for my account only if you see, right? So hopefully I do not see any anomalies here because we have our, uh, stakeholders in the meeting right now. If they see I've been doing some stuff I'm not supposed to do directly, it could be a problem for me actually. So luckily I have no security alerts. So there is one anomaly in place. I'm not sure what it is, but anyway, so these are the Azure activity logs that I've been doing. These are the 2.1K office activity I did over the past 30 days, right? So if I click on the anomaly here, I just want to see that what I've been doing actually. Oh, yes. I run that. It should give me the actual anomaly behavior that what this user have done that it created one anomaly over here. This is just the out of scope guys. I just wanted for my reference only. So it says that there is some office activity Okay. Okay, so there might have been some, you know, uh, files that were shared uh, to me from somebody. I had to, you know, access some presentations and all. Anyway, so the uh, with these user analytics behavior, you can have a overview of what uh, is happening within your organization. Definitely, you have created the users. You have given the access to your, uh, let's say, Azure account or SharePoint account. So. You, in order to keep track that all those users are behaving normally, you can have all those insights using user analytics behavior. Okay. So now coming to the actual uh, representation of the chat GPT and uh, AI integration part. So now I will divert your attention to this uh, logic app that is in place. So I want, as I told you uh, before, that I want you to have a clear basic understanding of even to a non technical person that what is going on. So logic apps are basically a bunch of functions that are, you know, a serverless function that used to automate your workflow. So it's just a waterfall method, right? If water drops there, it will just drips down to the all of these services, right? So this is the Microsoft Sentinel connector in the logic app that I have connected. So let's say what this connector is doing. If there is an any incident, please run these workflows step by step according to what I have actually integrated. So if I click on uh, this, so here you can see I have connected it basically to my Azure, uh, sorry, not Azure, but chat GPT account. I have using the API here. I have integrated my chat GPT account into Microsoft Sentinel into my Azure environment here. So here I'm giving the prompt. Okay. And here I'm uh, telling chat GPT if there is a security incident, please create the task into the incident tab. So we will come to the tasks as well. Please describe me the what are the tactics and techniques added to those Microsoft Sentinel incident and then add the comment and then 
in the end just give me a alert into my microsoft teams group right where there are bunch of stakeholders i will show you that in a moment so this is a whole package of let's say the event is coming it is going to the chat gpt connectors over here chat gpts are creating responses and then they are posting a message into the teams channel where your SOC engineers are sitting for the uh, monitoring purposes okay so if i go to the incidents over here so i want to also here i want to mention one point is that so these automation parts right now so the function of logic apps is basically it get triggers automatically when there is an event right but just for the uh, sake of demonstration purposes and just for the sake of you know not smoking the credits and not smoking the uh, uh, zero account credits or uh, dollars that we have uh, into our uh, infrastructure so i have not created that uh, automation rule but you can create right if this let's say you say that if there is an suspected brute force attack on linux virtual machine automatically run this logic app right but for the sake of demonstration purposes i will run it manually okay so i will just let me see click on few details so right now there are no tasks so basically this microsoft sentinel give you the project management for security as well so what does uh, i mean by that just like in the project manager you assign tickets right you assign the description of the tickets that these are actually the errors that you need to solve so just like that you have tasks in microsoft sentinel so in that uh, logic app i have given that when there is an incident comes create the task for SOC engineers that they go and they do those tasks step by step in order to remediate that attack okay so i will just I will go back to the Microsoft Sentinel incidents, and I told you before that I will trigger this uh, uh, logic app manually. I will not create an automation rule, but you can create an automation rule where uh, when this incident comes, the logic app will trigger by itself, but I will trigger it manually from here. Okay, so if I, let me also create, open it into the run history as well. Okay. Okay, so you can see in the real time that what is actually going on. So the whole scenario is when this incident comes, trigger this uh, logic app automatically, but for now, let's run it manually from here by run button. So it says that triggering playbook. So say it says playbook was triggered. So I told you I want to show you that what is actually the uh, actually happening. So it says one logic app is in running state, okay? If I click it on, you can see the actual live demonstration and runtime what is actually happening. So it, it is analyzing the incident. It said this check has been verified. And then after uh, this check is verified, these will run. OK. So now it is doing all those steps, just like in a waterfall method, step by step. It will start from here and then all the way it will go and send me an alert in my microsoft teams over here that there has been an alert okay so if i click on refresh the process should have been complete by now yeah okay so let's go to the incident that uh triggered the logic app right so this was the incident if i click on view full detail so as i told you that uh, just like in the any project management tool uh, you have those uh, comments in place, you have those tasks in place, and just like that, you have all those things into the dashboard, into the incident itself in Microsoft Sentinel. So here you can see it has automatically added the comment from chat GPT, right? So what that comment is, in that logic app, I have told him to give me the description of the attack, right? I want to have the description that what that attack actually is. So here you can see it says that these are the tactics related to the uh, suspected brute force on Linux machines. So credential access, it says that refers to any form of unauthorized access or retrieval of login credential, right? What just, just what the brute force attack is. It's actually explaining the brute force attack over here into the comments. And it's all generated by chat GPT. You don't have to go and manually search for it. You don't have to go and you know panic about the situation. The incident has triggered and it has already created some helping hand for you into that specific incident itself. 
so if you click on tasks so it so here it has added that please perform those tasks to remediate this threat okay so these it says that the, these are the tasks from chat gpt if i click on drop down so first of all it says step one validate the incident okay and then uh, re try to recreate the uh, attack what is actually happening and then identify all of uh, the documentation it is giving me okay review the firewall and network logs so these this is the response created by chat gpt and one very important thing it is also giving us some example kql queries to run right in order to validate and uh, investigate those responses it is giving me the example kql queries also here if you can see so these queries you can simply run and it will help you remediate that attack so this was the whole use case an incident came this logic app triggered this logic app went to the chat gpt asked for the help asked for creating the incidents and uh, uh, giving us the description of the attack then generating the kql and automatically added those things here and also i talked uh, with you about the uh, that i will have that uh, alert in place where are my soc engineers sitting in an actual group so if i am just uh, opening it so here if you see this is my teams this is the azure sentinel group that we have created where our let's say soc engineers or soc experts are sitting so whenever this uh, logic app triggered so if you see here in the end i have mentioned it that whenever the attack triggers just create one message and send me automatically to, to teams as well so you're saying hey here's our team this is an alert with the following incident title this is the title of the attack the title says that okay it's a suspected boot for attack on linux machines so these are the entities involved here you can see the entity so okay this is the virtual machine that is being compromised okay here you can also see a bunch of properties of the, those attacks as well you can see the ip address as well okay here is the ip address okay and here is the uh virtual machine name and also it said that also tasks has been assigned by open ai to that specific incident which include the description of the attack and remediation of the incident as well we just saw that right we just saw uh just let me open it just getting up closer again so it says that tasks has been assigned. So these are the tasks that were assigned by uh, chat GPT. Okay, and the comment that I showed you earlier, it was described. So this is the comment that was added by chat GPT itself. So this is a whole package of how you can integrate your chat GPT with Microsoft Sentinel and then query those alerts into Microsoft Teams as well. And all that using automation capabilities and AI capabilities using Microsoft Sentinel. Okay, so I guess that that was it about the uh, chat GPT and uh, uh, the demonstration. So these are the TechBricks Sentinel expertise. Okay, so and here are the TechBricks special offerings. Uh, our team can, uh, you know, tell you briefly about it. So yeah, yeah. So thank you, Ahmed, for the demo. So guys, as uh, you have seen the demo, so this is just like, you know, uh, uh, considering the time, it's it's a nutshell what we can show you. But how we can help you is, uh, as you know, that we, as Ahmed uh, previously mentioned, that we are a cloud consultancy firm, and we can help you with identifying the use cases uh, uh, which you, you know, you have to done on your Microsoft or your account. So we can help you with a tailored solution as per your requirements, as per your business goals and needs. We can recommend you what are the security best practices you need to implement and what are the things which you can automate and where we can use the power of AI to integrate it with the Microsoft Sentinel. We can optimize the configuration with you. We can help you in creating that automated rules, uh, you know, which can help you in the remediation in a very quick way. And also uh, we are the many services providers, so we can help you with the continuous support as well. And uh, here are some, you know, TechBricks offerings that we are offering.
uh, for you a free of charge. We can help you with the security assessment. So if you are already on the cloud or you are planning to adopt, you know, the Microsoft Cloud, so what we can help, we can help you with the security assessment. We, uh, in the assessment, we can brief you about the best practices, you know, how you can secure your Microsoft environment. Plus we can help you with your threat landscape analysis, data security evaluation, compliance review. If you, if you have, you know, a requirement for the particular set of compliance, how you can, you know, implement those compliance, how you can automate these things, uh, how you can apply governance. So we can help you with that as well. Plus, if you are still on on premises and you are implementing some same solutions, uh, if you want to go to the cloud, we can help you with the readiness assessment. Whether are you ready to adopt cloud and whether are you ready to adopt, you know, the uh, Microsoft Sentinel and other security services which are available on the cloud.